Hi everybody, welcome back to Harry John's YouTube channel. So, the moment you've all been waiting for another home brew video. So, yeah, we've had another year of, well, we've just had the summer. There's loads of blackberries outside, so today I decided to do a blackberry wine video. So, here's what you're going to need. So, first things first, some wild or organic. Um, as you can, blackberries. Of course it doesn't have to be, but this is the way I like to do things. Also need some wine yeast. My homebrew man recommended a Bordeaux for blackberries. Um, that's it, and you're going to want about 1.3 kilograms of these, and the same for the sugar, so you're kind of matching it for the moment. Um, we also need a stirring spoon, just tucked away in there, big stirring spoon and a fermenting jug and I think that is it. Optional extras are a hydrometer and a measuring beaker. You don't need these in a traditional way you know if, if you've just put the same ratio of sugar and fruit in you should be fine but we're gonna do it a little bit more sophisticated. Alright so first things first these blackberries have been washed so I'm gonna add them to the fermentation bucket. All right, here we are, they guys. So all the blackberries are sitting in the bottom of this bucket, and just look at the day outside as well. It's absolutely gorgeous today. I love doing this on a sunny, sunny day. Excellent. So next thing we're going to do, we want to add three and a half pints of boiling water to the top of these. So it can get quite steamy now. That's it. So that's about two liters. So I'm going to have to put the kettle back on with another litre and a half. That should be lovely now. Alright, so we'll just quickly move on into the future and we're back. So here we are. We have the three and a half pints mixed in, sorry, of water mixed in with our blackberries. We can see that it's coming to almost a gallon on the side of our bucket. So now the next stage is to add the sugar while it's all still nice and hot. And this should hopefully bring it to just over a gallon. What we shall see. So in goes the sugar. Two tones, lovely. Super, put that to one side. And then just give it a good, good stir. And get all that sugar mixed in with the fruit. Now the more sugar you add, um, obviously wine has a higher alcohol content than things like cider, so with cider you don't have to add nearly as much sugar, but for the wine, I forget the exact one, but we're, we're probably looking for somewhere around 15%, anywhere around there. That's it. Brilliant, so it's had a good stir, and you can see it's gone to over a gallon now. So we're making one gallon of wine, but later on when we siphon out and get rid of all these blackberries later, um, you're going to lose some uh, mass overall. So this is going to, when it goes into the demijohn as just a liquid with no more fruit, um, it's going to come to roughly about a gallon. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. All right, so now after we've given it a good stir, we want to leave this for, I'd say you're going to be looking at about an hour, maybe two hours, something around there. We need this to cool down um, to room temperature. I think yeast uh, will die anywhere over about 24 or 25 degrees C. So put this in a cool place, as it's a lovely day outside, I'm going to have to find somewhere out of the sun where this can cool down. Um, so if you've got a thermometer, great. Um, I've got a digital one, so I'm going to keep an eye on this and come back in a couple of hours. And then we can add our Bordeaux yeast. Alright, welcome back everyone. So the wine has now cooled down. I say wine, it's not quite a wine yet. And we've got 19.9 degrees C. 
so this is fine. So the yeast can survive in this, no problem. So I've measured out the yeast. So this is one fifth of this bag. So this bag will do five, or packet, sorry, will do five gallons. We've got just one gallon, or just above, but that'll sort itself out. So what we want to do now is pour all of this on top of our must, I believe they call it. That's what this little uh, black braised soup is. It smells gorgeous. There we go. So that's all of that in there. And I believe it says you have to let it sit on the surface for 15 minutes. Um, and then we get our big spoon and we stir it all in. So I'll come back in 15 minutes. Alright, so I don't know if that shows up very well. Oh yeah, that's coming up quite well on the camera. So there's all the yeast. It's been about 15 minutes. Not a lot has happened really. It's just changed colour. And what we're going to do is just stir it up now. Give it a good, good stir. Excellent. Brilliant. And now we're going to leave that for 24 hours. And what we're going to do then, and this is optional, we're going to use the hydrometer which is stored in there and we're going to use the measuring beaker so stay tuned and I'll put that in this video as well oh and don't forget guys put the lid on don't press it, press it tight because any gases from the fermentation could blow the lid off and it might be a bit violent if it's uh, pressed down completely so just put it so it's sitting on a top grab your bucket put it somewhere not too hot, not too cold. About room temperature is exactly what we want here. Brilliant. So back with those hydrometer readings. Alright, good morning everyone. Here we are, 24 hours later. Have a look at this. Look at that. It's still bubbling away. I don't know if you can pick it up on there. Any bubbles? So this has been stored anyway for um, 24 hours at around 22 degrees C. Um, and it's coming along fantastic. It's been like uh, almost a year since I've done any brewing and I just couldn't see much activity on this when I left it last night and then this morning, this is incredible. It's all going really nicely. Alright then, so this is the optional extra bit. I'm going to... Oh, destroying the place. I'm going to fill up this beaker with a test sample from here and then we're going to use the hydrometer to see the alcohol level in there. See if it's going to be enough for us. Alright. Okay, so just taking a reading, and this wine is on track to be about 13%, which I'm happy with to be honest, so I won't be adding any more sugar. That should be absolutely fine. Alright, so now we're going to pop this lid back on, and we're going to put it away for another four to six days, I'd say so. It'll be like a week in total, including yesterday. Or maybe a little bit less. So I'm going to be checking the specific gravity again, uh, say every few days, and um, just make sure when it stops changing, because it still might get a bit stronger, but when it stops um, changing the readings, um, when they stay constant, that means nothing else is going to happen, and then we get to the next part, which is bottling up and storing them away for a few months so they uh, get nicer and nicer. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. Always make sure to clean and sterilize all your equipment when brewing. And have a great day guys. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.